Take this glass for example. Let's say we're shooting a lifestyle program and the director has decided that she really liked the glass to be green to match the candle or maybe blue for a bit more contrast. Well, rather than reshooting it, let's see how we can make this happen in the Avid. So here is the shot we just saw. I've already cut it into the timeline so it's ready to go. You will notice it is in the timeline twice on two separate layers. This is for two reasons. Firstly, as I draw the mat, the effect will turn the parts of the image outside the mat black and I will lose some of my points of reference. Secondly, the final effect will need two layers eventually, so it might as well be now. And to help me distinguish between the two layers, I'm going to place a color effect on V1 and use the effect editor to invert the luminance. Next, I need to apply an effect called Animat to the segment on V2. This effect is found in the key category of the effect palette. Once it is applied, I park on the segment and open my effect editor by using my effects editing toolset. You can see my effects editing toolset has been quite customized. I'm going to have a closer look at how you can unlock the power of toolsets in a future podcast. Now I have my effect editor open, I need to draw a shape or mat around the glass to isolate it from the rest of the scene. In the effect editor, we have a number of drawing tools, but the one I'm going to use today is the polygon tool. This tool allows me to draw virtually any shape I want on the image. I'm using the polygon tool to place control points at various parts of the image. I'm not too worried about the shape right now because I can always tidy it up later on. To close the shape, I click on or very near the first point or double click when I reach the second last point. This will automatically close the shape. Now that I've drawn the rough shape, I'm going to tweak it so it more closely matches the shape of the glass. Before I do, I'm going to zoom into the image to get more detail. I will use the zoom tool, which is the little magnifying glass over here, to click and zoom in until I reach the required zoom level. That should do it. Now zooming in means that some of the edges of my new matte shape are no longer visible. But if I use the Control and Alt keys, you can see how my cursor changes to a hand and I can move the image around within the Effect Preview window to see different parts of it. The sides are easy because they're pretty much straight lines, but the top and the bottom of the glass are curved. But I'll fix that by adding extra points and using Bezier curves. For the top of the glass, I'll add a point near the middle of the line. To add these extra points, I simply need to use the Reshape tool, which is here in the Effect Editor. With the Reshape tool active, I'll click on the line where I want the new point to be. Now I can move a point later on, so I don't need to be super accurate here. Now I've added the extra points, I'm going to move them into position and then turn them into curve points to have the edge of the mat more accurately track the edge of the glass. To do this, I hold the ALT key and click the control point. Once you do, you'll end up with a curved line running through the point which now has Bezier handles coming out of it. You can see the behaviour of the line as I adjust the length and orientation of the Bezier handles. I don't want to spend too much time on Bezier handles in this podcast, so we'll revisit them some other time. Now the line tracks the edge of the glass very accurately. The final finishing touch to the mat is to feather the edge just a little bit to assist in the blending of the foreground and background elements. I'm going to apply a feathering of about two. That should be just enough. I'll also turn on anti-aliasing. So now I have a very neat outline around the glass. What now? First, now that I've drawn the matte shape, I can get rid of the colour effect on video 1 because I don't need it anymore. Next, I need to treat the glass inside the matte. I can do this by using a great Avid feature that Avid has been able to do for as long as I can remember, called nesting. While I'm in effect mode, I can double click the animate effect and the nest will expand. This is called expanded nesting, which is only about 10 years old. The main advantage of expanded nesting over simple nesting is that I can see the results of the effect as a whole and not just single effects in isolation. 
I'm going to get something really simple like a color effect from the image category in the effect palette and place it on the shot inside the mat. Then I will open up the color gain section and use the RGB sliders to tint the glass. You can see how by using expanded nesting the effect preview window is showing me the whole effect. Well that's the effect built. I'm now going to exit my effect editing toolset and play the effect. But notice the blue dot. This means that this is anything but a real time effect, so I have to render it. Well that's fine if I don't want to make any changes like alter the glass colour, but if I do make changes I have to re-render the effect. But there is one very useful feature built into the animat effect and that is the ability to export a matte picked file. This creates a graphic with an embedded alpha channel which when re-imported will self key in real time. First I have to reopen my effect editing toolset and select the animat effect. I now right click in the effect preview window and choose export matte picked from the contextual menu. Then I select a name and a destination for the file. It's always a good idea to save the file somewhere you can easily find it later on and back it up. And that means not on the desktop. Once I've exported it, I need to import it again. I have an imports bin for this very purpose. I'll right click in the bin and choose import from the contextual menu. Navigate to the file and click the options button. Now make sure you select the following options. I'm going to cover exactly what these options mean in a future podcast so don't worry about exactly what they mean for now. Just make these selections. When you're done, you're good to import the graphic. What I have here now is a graphic with an embedded alpha channel which shows the areas of transparency as black and those areas which are opaque as white. The black or transparent area will eventually show the original shot underneath and the white area will be replaced by the effect. Before I go any further, I'm going to make a copy of my sequence. This enables me to go back to the original if I need to later. Next, I need to strip out the contents of the animat, so I'll step into the animat, mark an in at the beginning and an out at the end, enable the track containing the media and hit Alt C. This not only copies the contents to the clipboard, but also automatically loads the contents into the source monitor ready for me to use them. I'm not ready yet, but I will be soon. Next, I have to load up the imported mat into the source monitor. The matte shape is actually the same length as the effect, so all I need to do is mark my entire sequence with in and out marks, park at the head of my source clip and override it into V2, replacing the original animat effect. You can see how the V1 layer is still visible, but the glass is now white. I will now replace the white contents of the imported matte with the block we copied into the source monitor earlier. Double click the imported matte on V2 patch my source material to the layer in the timeline and overwrite it in. Now all that remains for me to do is to collapse the expanded nest back down and play the effect. Very easy. But what if I wanted to adjust the color? I simply expand the nest again, adjust the color and play it again, all in real time. What you've seen today is a very tiny fraction of some of the concepts covered in the MC110 and MC305 AVID courses. You can get more information about our many AVID training courses on our website. Well, that's the end of episode one. Hopefully you've come away with some real techniques that you can use on your next project or maybe even on the project that you're working on right now. Until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.